Hello, everybody. This is Robbie reporting live for Sports on the Hill podcast. We're doing a little earlier show today, as you can see. It is President's Day if you're listening to us live. Uh, we thought, so doing a show tonight uh, with the whole group, we wanted to give a couple of people the night off. And I thought this would be just an easier way to recap a couple of the games, but not go into a, a full show. So it'll be a shorter, maybe 20, 30 minute show. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the Wizards and the Capitals and the week that was uh, and preview the week that's coming up, but not have the full in-depth uh, roundtables that you might be used to on our show. But uh, I did, I am going to bring Brian Brennan on in a few minutes and we're going to talk about um uh, both the Capitals and the Wizards. I know that uh, you know, he's a big New York sports fan if you follow the show. So uh, the Capitals will be playing the Rangers a few times this week. So we want to get his take uh, on that. And uh, before that, I'll talk about the Penguins matchup. Uh, and then after that, we'll get into uh, the interesting week that was for the Wizards. And we'll even preview tonight's big game uh, against Houston. So um, we'll uh, do all that in about 20 to 30 minutes. So um uh, I guess I'm going to start off by uh, sharing my screen, and we'll take a look at the uh, the schedule. Uh, we're going to start off with the Capitals, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a rough game. If people were following um, yesterday, um, uh, unfortunately, it was uh, a two-one after the first, uh, but the Capitals uh, scored and tied it up, and they thought they get some momentum back. But then the the Penguins uh, got a couple of goals real quick. Uh, and then the Caps were able to score one more. So, uh, but by the end of the second period, it was already uh, four to three. Uh, but then uh, the Penguins uh, were able to get uh, some goals sort of late in the game. Uh, just disappointing uh, game, especially because the Capitals hadn't played in over or in about a week. And uh, they had lost the previous Sunday on Super Bowl Sunday. And now I believe they've lost four games in a row in regulation. Uh, Nicholas Backstrom uh, had a, a nice goal. Kuzi had had a goal. Uh, Verana had a goal for the good guys. Um, unfortunately, Rust got two. Gensel got one. Uh, Crosby got an empty netter. Um, and um, uh, Zach Ashen Reese uh, got one as well. Uh, and um, Brendan Tanoff, I guess it is. Uh, anyway, but yeah, the Penguins uh, unfortunately beat us and it makes it so it's a uh, pretty close i'm going to pull up the nhl standings uh, for the east as um we'll uh, get into it uh so we got into the division uh standings uh here we are we're at the here we are uh boston's leading right now philadelphia is in second the islanders are in third and with that loss it uh, puts us in the fourth we're pretty much tied uh with um uh, the uh, Penguins, we just have one more in, in the row column here. So regulation overtime win. Uh, so uh, it's, it, but it's very uh, close. Um, and obviously we're going to be playing them again in our next matchup. So that'll really decide where early on in the season, uh, where these teams stand. So remember the only the top four teams make the playoffs. One will play four, two will play three. Uh, the Rangers are uh, right there in um, sixth place. So again, after we'll play Pittsburgh, um on uh the, the next matchup uh we'll pull up the upcoming schedule right here uh they're going to play tomorrow if you're listening live or tuesday at seven uh and then uh i'm not sure if the sabers game is going to happen or not they've been postponing most of their games i don't think we've seen an official statement on this come across but i know uh that buffalo has been uh, on a COVID absence so that game probably does not happen on thursday uh, and then, uh, so then the, the two games after that will be on Saturday, February 20th and Sunday, February 21st, uh, both games at seven o'clock again to both weekend, uh, night games. Uh, and, um, with that, we're going to bring in, uh, Brian Brennan. Um, and, uh, how you doing, Brian? I'm good, Robbie. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate of course. it. So I loved your podcast this morning. I just finished it. It was a, a great episode. I encourage people to check out upon further review, uh, upon further review with Brian Brennan. Um, it's uh, it's a great little show. I even actually, if you're watching this on Facebook Live in the tag, Brian Brennan's tag, but it's actually to his show page. If you click on that, uh, it'll go. And I'm sure he's got the latest stuff there. Also. Yes. On um, if you go to sportsothp.com, you always have our latest podcast, but at the very top, there's a podcast partners button and click on, uh, Brian's uh, podcast there and the newest episode will come out. And then this one, they had a great, uh, they asked you a bunch of questions, different. Yeah. Questions. Ask Brian. Uh, yeah. 
third time a, I've done that. I love doing it every time. It's a lot of fun to have people ask me questions. So that, that's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, there's some good ones today. Yeah, there are a lot of great questions. Uh, we still differ on the universal DH rule, yes. uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I understand uh, your rationale and, and why you want it to go away. Um, uh, anyway, so that's good. And then also you go through a bunch of like the news and notes of all the different big games. So we're not going to get into too much of that here um, today. If people want to sort of find out what has happened recently in sports news and what's upcoming, uh, definitely check out Brian's uh, podcast for more information on that. Today, we're going to do an abbreviated show. We're going to talk about the Caps for a few minutes and obviously the Rangers. And then we're also going to just break into the wizard schedule and preview tonight's game. Uh, it'll be sort of a short and sweet uh, episode. Um, real quickly, Brian, um, the the Rangers, uh, how have they been doing? And uh, well, do you know anything about Buffalo? Do, are they still on hiatus? I mean, that's what uh, I thought. I believe Buffalo, uh, well, the thing is, I was concerned about the Devils, too, because the Devils are also going through a COVID thing, and the Rangers are supposed to play them tomorrow. So I, I'm, I was more focused on that. But I guess Buffalo is having an outbreak, too. So I, I don't know exactly whether they're going to come back or not. But um, as so there might as the be Rangers, there might be a gap between for both teams, yeah. right? And there's Philly too. Philly's got COVID issues. There's a lot of teams, and specifically our division, that are going through COVID uh, hell right now. Um, but as far as the Rangers go, uh, the last couple of games have not, other than the win against the Capitals, um, which I have to mention on your show, obviously. Um, other than that game, things have not been great. They've lost three in a row. Uh, the, the, they lost to the Islanders on Monday. That was a bad shutout loss. Uh, that game was on national television, bad loss uh, shutout. And uh, then they lost in overtime to the Bruins. Um, in a, they have played back-to-back against the Bruins, lost both games. First one in overtime on a Brad Marchand, ugh, Brad Marchand goal. Ugh, I hate Brad Marchand. And, I also uh, hate Brad Marchand. So. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't. I'm pissed that he was the one to score that goal. And then Friday night, I was mostly watching the Knicks, but I had my eye on the Rangers too in this one, and they lost pretty badly, one nothing, just a ter- you know, just terrible close loss to the Bruins. Um, and then they were supposed to play on Sunday, but that was postponed due to COVID. So we'll see how this week goes. Like I said, they're scheduled to play the Devils tomorrow. The Devils are going through their own COVID shit, and then we've also got, um, I believe, I-, I can't remember who our opponent after. It's Philly. We got Philly after that. So we'll see if that game gets played. Philly, like I said, going through their own COVID problems. And then we've got the Caps. So there's still a lot up in the air. But obviously right now, both the Capitals and the Rangers are kind of struggling. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup, back-to-back games. Um, I'll talk about the goalie situation in Washington for just a second. The um, Double V has started 10 straight games in the last couple. He hasn't looked particularly good. And some people say that he needs a break, and I think that's true, although we did get a bunch of days off. I think uh, watching um, you know, from the sidelines and watching another goalie play is a different kind of break than just when your team isn't playing for a week. And um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if we get Craig Anderson into a game or uh, if Samsonov can come back. Now, Samsonov was able to practice with the team. Uh, he didn't look that good. They sent him down. I think he's uh, – I can't tell if he's still on a two-way contract. I've read that somewhere so that he still is because he's still so young, and so he can go down to the Hershey Bears. I've also heard that sometimes for injuries and reassignments, they, they allow teams to, to do that for goalies. Uh, mm-hmm. so I, don't, I don't know which it was for him, but he went down and played a minor league game last night. I believe gave up five goals and a loss in overtime mm-hmm. in the AHL, which is – not great. Now he hasn't played for a month, you know, with all the situations. So he's, uh, he's out of it and it's kind of why they bring him down there. So that doesn't happen at an NHL game. Um, but obviously he still needs a little bit more time, uh, to, to work on some of that. Uh, so I wouldn't bring him up for the Penguins game tomorrow, for example. Um, yeah. so- Manichek was looking good before the Flyers game, right? Like he was doing yeah. pretty well. And then that game against the Flyers on Super Bowl Sunday happened. Now these last two games, hasn't been very good for him. So I don't know. Let's see if they bring Samson off back. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it's kind of a goalie carousel. We also still have Philip, uh, you know, Copley, um, you know, or Phoenix Copley. Um, and yeah. uh, so uh, I was thinking of Philip Grubauer, which is our old, <laughs> you know, you know, so um, 
Phoenix Copley, yeah, he's still on our taxi squad and he's been up at our level, you know, practicing. He's also been down at the AHL level playing. So uh, he's, uh, you know, we're really using this taxi squad and ability to rotate goalies. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. I, I still think Double V gets another nod against the Penguins to try to shake off the rust because, I mean, before those two losses, he had been playing well for them. And I think he probably want to get him on uh, back on the horse. If, he, if he's still shaky in that, then it's a trend and then you got to deal with it. But mm-hmm. uh, two games, I don't know if that's enough. And I guess I'm hoping the rest of the team shows up because it wasn't all him. I thought the defense was lacking in front of him uh, in opportunities. And uh, so uh, it'll be an important week, that Pittsburgh game, maybe a Buffalo game and then those two games against the Rangers it'll, it'll definitely be a lot to break down and we'll probably break down this Penguins game a little bit further uh, next week on Sports in the Hill podcast when we do a full show but uh, overall I thought that the effort wasn't quite there I've you know Orloff hasn't looked great since he's returned I thought Kuzi I was happy with how he played I thought Nicholas played well I think that there was moments uh, from our top line but Ovechkin didn't take over and our just our defensive effort and I just thought that the Penguins really wanted it more in this game and uh, it, it showed especially uh, we just uh, didn't have very much offensive zone time a lot of people mm-hmm. want to blame the goalie but if the puck is always in our zone it's it becomes very difficult for him or any goaltender in the nhl uh, and pittsburgh's still a dangerous team it's not like i know they've had an off year but so has everybody i don't think anybody's like looking amazing in the east but yet the east is so tough anybody can win yeah. on any given night so anyway i think that we've uh, talked enough about that let's um i'm gonna uh, share my screen once again uh and pull up the the wizard schedule uh, an interesting week uh, when we last left off uh, we kind of did a post-game show uh, for um, this. Uh, uh, let me just. X out That's it. the game. That's the game. Yeah, I'm just excited about these other ones because things were popping open. And I was like, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, the Wizards, uh, Chicago. Um, uh, so uh, the Wizards were able to hold on to that victory. It was sort of uh, a bit dicey at the end, but we really break down that at the end of uh, last week's podcast in a second. Um, segment so if you missed after wizards talk we did a second wizard segment so i did a compilation video on our sports othp page that has both segments together if they want uh, to go check out that and then afterwards we kind of previewed the next three games talking about also uh, we thought we would be on after the rockets game obviously we're on before uh, now um, to play the raptors the knicks and the celtics um, most of the people on the round table thought they'd maybe win one, but most of them thought we would lose all of them. But I got to give a shout out to our man, uh, champ, uh, Ken, uh, he predicted we would beat the Celtics and he was right. We did beat the Celtics, but real quickly, uh, let's just, uh, the, the Raptors game wasn't very close. Um, they just got manhandled in the first quarter, uh, 40 to 28, uh, the second, it was closer. Uh, the wizards, uh, you know, played okay in the third, uh, but in the fourth, it kind of fell apart again, and Toronto kind of pulled away at the end, a 137-115 a victory. Uh, the Knicks, uh, Brian, I'll let you break down this one. Uh, it got close in the third at times, but then kind of pulled away in the fourth. Yeah, um, it, like you said, it, the Wizards did hang tough. Obviously, no Bradley Beal made this a very difficult game for them. Um, and I went into this game as a Knicks fan, even with Bradley Beal, I was pretty confident the Knicks were going to come away with the win just based on how the season's gone so far. The Knicks usually beat teams that they should beat. So I was pretty happy with the result. Um, and like you said, the difference was there was a, a stretch that bridged the third and the fourth quarter where the Knicks went on a 14 and no run. Uh, that was pretty much when the Knicks just absolutely pulled away in this game. Um, and never look back. Um, it, like the Wizards did cut it close at times um, in the third, but, you know, I never really honestly felt like this game was in doubt as a Knicks fan. Uh, shout out to Julius Randle. He was great. He had 24 points and 18 boards. Uh, another great game for him. Uh, go back to the Wizards stats. I want to see who, uh, who did good on, for them. Uh, Russell Westbrook had a good game, obviously, in Bradley Beal's absence, 23 points, nine, uh, nine rebounds, 10 assists, just one rebound short of a triple-double. But um, ultimately not enough. They clearly missed Bradley Beal in this game. Um, and like I said, I felt pretty confident before this game. Even, you know, if, I, if Bradley Beal was playing, I would have st- still felt very confident about this game as an expense. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the assists were pretty. And I, I just sorry, just one last thing. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell Robinson unfortunately fractured his hand in this game. That's going to be a big loss for the Knicks going forward. Uh, but we'll see how they do. They they have Nerlens Noel starting at center now, uh, but Robinson's going to be a big loss. Yeah, he'd been playing really well for you guys. So mm-hmm. I, I I feel bad. You know, I, I hate it when. Um, 
you know, basketball players get injured uh, on other teams. You know, it, it, for me, it's like this isn't like a big rivalry like in hockey or whatever where, you know, like you don't mind if it, one of your enemies are getting banged up, especially if you're seeing them eight times a year. But like yeah. in, in basketball, like losing a starting five player or, you know, a significant piece to a puzzle can really decimate a team because I've, I've been on the other side of that. And I, you know, so I never really root for, I mean, I don't root for injuries in any sport, but I, I, especially in basketball, I find that very tough. Um, yeah. Uh, especially for chemistry with the starting five, you know, it's not like hockey where there's lots of lines that are running on, right. It's, you know, mm-hmm. that starting five is such a important unit and it's even your reserves, like how they come in and they play off that. I think that that's been the wizard's biggest problem this year is they don't, they haven't figured out who their starting five is and who's coming off the bench in what situation. And just defensively, yeah. the wizards are a mess off the bench. You know, it's just, they give up way too many points and they just yeah. haven't figured out that kind of rotation yet. So uh, I, you know, having a couple of those big pieces in missing and the wizards have i mean i think having westbrook in and out of the lineup so often in this condensed schedule has made it hard to have a cohesive you know team chemistry and like sometimes i feel like they look better when he's not out there which is weird i know uh we'll yeah. get in, you know we'll get into some of that but um yeah it's just such a it's such a weird sport in the sense that like losing a starting five member can really change uh the dynamics of a team yeah a lot. um Let's get into a game that I was really impressed by. Uh, yeah, Westbrook did play in this one, and they got a win. It's one of the few times where Westbrook's played, and they've won, and I felt like he's been a significant impact on it. I mean, Bradley Beal, obviously, with the 35 points, but, uh, you know, 11 assists, 13 points, 9 rebounds from uh, Westbrook definitely helps. But, I mean, the big thing I want to talk about with the Wizards was, for once, they held a team to under 50 points in the first half, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, I can't remember – many times where they've held teams in the low forties in the first half, it hasn't happened much this year. I'll tell you that. Um, and uh, just overall, I mean, even through the first three quarters, um, you know, uh, to hold a team under 75 and un- hold them under a hundred for the wizards who allow so many points per game, that's huge. And Boston usually can put up big numbers. I wanted to point out that they only had two double digit scores. Now they did put up 50 points combined, uh, but uh, in today's NBA, you need at least three double digit scores to win a game in my mind. Like it's just, it's really rare to win it with just two, uh, in today's NBA, uh, just cause the scores are up over a hundred now. Um, and, uh, yeah, for the wizards, for example, you have one at 35, but you had 15 for Rui, you had, um, Wagner with 11, um, uh, you know, Westbrook with 13, uh, Robin mm-hmm. Lopez, you know, chipped in with 10 as well. Uh, and a couple of guys, you know, I thought Denny played great. I think he, Defensively, I really like what Denny brings to the team. Uh, mm. And, um, you know, Lopez has moments. You know, Bertans, I think, defensively has played pretty terrible. And he's not making as many threes as people expected. I don't think he is living up to the contract that we may have signed him to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Neto is really good. Um, you know, I think that he brings a spark to the team off the bench uh, at times that you really need. Uh, I know he doesn't necessarily always show up on the stat sheet, but whenever I watch him play, I think he has you know moments where he's really solid. Uh, Definitely. Uh, but overall, I thought just a really great game. Um, not necessarily a wonderful shooting game by any team uh, from the field or from three. Um, free throws really hurt Boston, sixty uh, percent, and they only had thirty attempts. Uh, so eighteen made free throws. Uh, it's probably not going to get it done in today's NBA, you know, mm-hmm. which is sad, you know. But it's just you know there's. You need more usually. Uh, so 30, thir- 31 made free throws on the other side for the Wizards. It's pretty much the difference right there in the game. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, just offensive rebounds, uh, you know, um, uh, Boston you know, outdid them on that. But overall, pretty even steals. There was nine steals. Uh, for Washington, only five uh, for the Celtics. So I thought that, you know, limiting turnovers, um, you know, both teams had about 16, 17, but overall not too terrible uh, points in the paint. The Wizards outscore them 40 to 32 on that. So, uh, you know, just overall a good defensive effort by the Wizards, uh, which is something that they're going to need uh, tonight. So we're going to preview uh, this Rockets game. Uh, you know, all the news and notes is John Wall was unhappy with the way that the Wizards handled the trade, right? So that's all the, yeah. the talking things going into it. Um, and, uh, uh, but I mean, this is at least good. John Wall and his brother Bradley Beal and the turning point that led to his trade. So, you know, anyway, there's some interesting articles out there um, that people should go and check. There's a lot of storylines, obviously, because a big blockbuster trade uh, with Westbrook and Wall happened between these two teams. 
Uh, the Rockets seem to to start the season have gotten the better end of this deal with only 15 losses and 11 wins. Uh, but it's still too early to know long term. You know, I think that John Wall has definitely exceeded people's expectations. I think Westbrook has been hurt for a lot of the season. Yeah, uh, we don't necessarily know the extent of that. So um, I don't want to necessarily say it's a bust automatically. You know, just I think people are quick to call it a bust. But I mean, if he, if he was injured and he could come back and make a difference, you know, we're still, uh, we're not even at the halfway point of the season. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, there's still a lot of games uh, left to play. I'm not saying the wizards are going to make a crazy run or anything, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, necessarily as bad uh, as people make it out to be um, real quickly. I want to get your thoughts on, um, on that trade, uh, any of that, the Boston game uh, thoughts and, um, and where the wizards are at. Well, as far as the Boston game goes, this really goes, you know, since Ken's not here, I'll be the one who says the defense, you know, the, to bring up the defense of the wizards in this game really shut the Celtics down. You mentioned it really only two guys got scoring for them yesterday and Brown and Kemba. Uh, they completely shut Jason Tatum. Who's the Celtics best player down. Uh, I think he only had six points in this game, maybe eight, six or eight points in this game. That's the type of effort the Wizards are going to need every night to compete and that they want to have any chance in this, in the East to get back into the playoff picture. So I was really impressed with their defensive effort in the Celtics game. Um, the best defensive effort they've arguably had all season, you could say. Uh, they were great in that game. Uh, as far as tonight's game goes, you know, this is going to be, I, I think, you know, kind of like it was the first time they played in Houston. I think this is going to be really emotional for both teams involved. I mean, this is, this trade was very emotional for both sides for John Wall to leave DC after all these years um, for this. You know, I wish there were fans in, st in the stands. because I, ha I have a feeling they would give John Wall a great ovation if he was, if he was, you know, if there were fans in the stands, but um, unfortunately that's not the case. But if the Wizards want any chance to win this game, you know, they're going to need a similar defensive effort to what they did against the Celtics. Um, the Knicks played the Rockets on Saturday night and they blew them out. The Rockets, honestly, you know, I, they look like they're honestly not, I don't, you know, with all the trades they made and all the roster turnover, I would not be surprised if they end up missing the playoffs in the Western Conference. So I was not impressed with them at all, honestly, on Saturday. The Knicks completely dominated them. So um, we'll see how this game goes for the Wizards. Um, no Russell Westbrook. He's it's back to back. Um, they played. He played yesterday against the Celtics. Um, so he probably won't yeah, I don't be playing think it, tonight. I, I haven't seen the full announcement, but you're right. I mean, he has not been. So our it, it's safe to assume. Yeah, yeah, it's safe yeah. To, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's going to be a big loss. Um, you obviously want Westbrook to play, and obviously, I'm sure he really wants to play against the Rockets, the team that traded him. Um, so. It's going to be a high emotion game. You know, I'll be watching the Knicks, but I'll be keeping my eye on this game tonight. I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, um, uh, Seth was uh, chiming in because he thought that Samsonov got sent to Hershey, and I, I claim that he is right. Unfortunately, didn't play that good in that one. So appreciate people for uh, tuning in live and asking questions. If anyone else, any other questions about the Caps or the Wizards, I'm always happy to take them live. Or if you comment after this uh, video has been posted and done, I'll come back to it and answer those questions as well. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it'll be an interesting battle. I obviously don't think they treated John Wall correctly and how they didn't mm -hmm. give him enough heads up, you know, and, and whatever they were trying to do. Uh, I'm not sure. I talked to my dad about this and he's like, well, maybe they didn't know what they were going to do with them. They were still on the fence. And so they couldn't tell him definitively, we're going to keep you or not because they wanted to see what they could get for him. And then the Westbrook opportunity came up and that was, you know, they didn't know what they had in John Wall. And, you know, they probably didn't know that that Westbrook was injured to the extent mm -hmm. that he was. And they take an opportunity in a roll of the dice. And I mean, to roll the dice and get a, a former MVP, it's not often you get that opportunity. Uh, especially yeah. we, John Wall hadn't played for two years. We didn't know what type of John Wall we were going to get. Uh, I don't regret being in support of this trade, by the way. Like I, I, I was very in support of this trade when it went down. I'm still like at the, uh, like at the time, it sounded like a great move for the Wizards to get Westbrook. Unfortunately, it hasn't quite worked out that way. Yeah, at least so far. So we'll see. Yeah, it, could, um, it could still yeah, change. It could still change. So uh, we have to see if John Wall's leg and all that can hold up after a full season. We have to know that, you know, Westbrook to see if he potentially gets better and, and learns the chemistry with a new team. And, you know, there is a 
talk that he's a selfish player in some extent that he's looking for the triple double more than the W. I don't know if that's true. You know, obviously the Westbrook fans claim that it's not true. And the people that are not Westbrook fans claim that it is, you know, so like there's definitely a big battle in a lot of these groups. Uh, I'm sure that people w- might even comment on this video later uh, with their thoughts on it. Uh, but I think they just got to find a way to coexist and, uh, you know, play defense. I think that that's really the key. I mean, we'll be able to – one of the top scoring teams in the league still with all of the turmoil mm-hmm. and all the craziness. People, like, overlook that because our defense is so terrible. But, uh, you know, if they could learn to play defense uh, – uh, and maybe they should get, you know, if they, maybe if they're keeping Scott Brooks, which I'm not sure why they keep on doing, but maybe if they keep on doing it, maybe they could bring in somebody defensively that can help on that side of the, the thing. And maybe he just works on the offense or I, I don't know. There, something's got to change because the defense yeah. has been good the whole time he's been here. And it's not, it's not like I'm thinking he's suddenly going to solve it, you know, this week. So, um, yeah. you know, but We'll, we'll see how that goes out. I'm going to share the schedule one more time. I want to talk about the upcoming schedule real quick and then get out of here. So on Wednesday, they play the Nuggets. Uh, so that's a Wednesday at 8 o'clock game. Uh, on Saturdays, they have a couple of days off. Uh, they play uh, the Trailblazers, and that's a 10 o'clock game. It's weird to see West Coast games, right? Because I'm so used to the hockey schedule where it yeah. doesn't happen anymore. I'm like, all right, the Wizards still have to travel. I don't know um, why the NBA is doing this, by the way, having teams travel like West. I would have done it the way hockey's doing it. Just keep it like as regionally as possible. Like I don't it, really love the travel. Yeah, like even if you play the other divisions in the East, I can understand that. But just yeah. cut out the West Coast games and vice versa. Like you know, like yeah, I don't, or I give don't a couple a couple of extra East Coast games if you have to like make up the numbers. You know, yeah. so uh, I don't I don't love it either. And it this really is where COVID would spread, right? You know, when it's yeah. the, when the two different sides are going to be meeting each other. Like at least in hockey in the North, they haven't had any problems because they haven't played any of the Eastern teams, right? Yeah. So like they're all up in Canada. Right. So um, the Wizards played the Lakers. If people follow me, they know that the Lakers are uh, my second favorite team. Uh, so that'll be an interesting matchup. Um, I know people that pisses off a lot of diehard Wizards fans. I'm sorry. Uh, but um, that game will be uh, next Monday at 10 o'clock. So next week, we'll actually do a pregame show for that one. And we'll recap the Rockets, uh, the Nuggets, uh, and the Trailblazers game uh, as part of that pregame show. Uh, so that that'll probably be about 9.45 next week. Um, and again, uh, no show tonight if people are just tuning in live. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it was a, a, a good little short podcast. Uh, Brian, I want to get your quick thoughts on those three matchups, the Nuggets, the Trailblazers, and the Lakers. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll get out of here. They're all going to be tough. Um, those are three very good Western Conference teams. Two of them were in the Western Conference Finals last year in the Nuggets and the Lakers. Uh, Portland's having a great, a better season than last year so far um, with, with Carmelo Anthony. Uh, CJ McCollum's out for them, so that may open the door for the Wizards. But these are going to be three very tough games. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe they win the Denver game because it's in D.C., closing, closing out of a long homestand. But they're all going to be tough, in my opinion. All, all those games are going to be difficult. Yeah. For sure. I don't, um, yeah, it's not, not but tonight's not game. I think they can win too, by the way. I think they can beat the Rockets. I think they can definitely win that game. All right. I like it. So we think that yeah. maybe, uh, they'll go one and three this week. Yeah, sure. Uh, and if they're lucky and they can, uh, catch the, uh, uh, the nuggets napping in DC or something, we can maybe win, <laughs> uh, uh, half of them. So that would be a, a good thing. Well, well, Brian, um, I definitely want to encourage everyone to, if they want to check out more of your takes on all things sports, or I really liked your uh, discussion about walking around DC and learning yeah. about new uh, places. I think that's really cool. I'm a big fan of walking around in cities when I travel. I don't do it enough in the city that I grew up in, but I, yeah, I would agree with you. There's tons of culture and there's many things and many places where you've walked that I've never even really spent much time uh, in. Yeah. So when I was growing up, a lot of the places in that green line uh, tour that you were talking about uh, wouldn't be safe to have walked around as a kid. So yeah, I was um, thinking about that too. Now those areas are like really safe and like fine. Like they're, they're 10 fine. years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there'd not, be no go, not, not so no much. Go. So um, yeah. I, I didn't have that experience myself growing up uh, here. So maybe I'll have to go out and uh, do a walk sometime and see some of those places. And especially when the weather gets nicer, uh, maybe uh, take uh, Zach out there. And um, uh, so, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really a good show. I want to, um, 
end the show just talking about if my energy hasn't been super high today um you know i want good thoughts out to my puppy dog Ginny. uh she's at the animal hospital today so it's been a bit of a rough day uh but hopefully she'll do better uh soon and uh but i just want to give her a little bit of a shout out i want to give a same, shout same out. thing here i send good vibes to Ginny as well obviously i've taken care of Ginny a few times pet sitting so i hope she pulls her Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to give a couple other quick shout outs. Uh, shout out to Carol, obviously, uh, who unfortunately is in Facebook jail. So if you haven't heard anything from him, he's fine. He's in, in real life. He's good. But uh, Zuckerberg got him from a two or three year old post because they're seemingly going back to their archives or something. But um, anyway, so if you don't see him, but definitely follow him on Tattooed Scorpio on uh, Twitter, um, you know, on our, uh, you find Carol on Instagram and plenty of other sources and he does pop up shows and uh, if you uh, want to check out his YouTube uh, channel, if you go to uh, sportsothp.com, uh, click on uh, CP3's YouTube button, uh, you can check that out. I have a new YouTube video that I'm working on, on a scuba one on a collaborative project on a music video I'm doing uh, using some old footage uh, with Hattie, uh, who's a, a musician assigned to Universal uh, Music. And uh, so that'll be coming out soon. So check that out. Uh, my YouTube channel is lots of scuba, has this podcast, lots of other cool, fun concerts and other videos uh if you like pokemon go has that too uh so again uh, sportsothp.com or webingames.com click on either of our youtube channels check out our latest videos over there also check out our merch line uh, district of champions um i'm wearing that repping that uh, uh it's also up there and we'll have this podcast up there a little bit later and upon further review on the podcast partners button check that out great new episode with brian uh that was today congratulations on hitting 30 on the, thank you on the new uh i forgot the, to mention that on today's episode too yeah. i was like it's just it's episode 30 i forgot to mention that it's a milestone so yeah well, i like me. especially i like the xxx milestone on the yeah. uh, numerals that you do so it looks yeah. cool uh congratulations on that we are not Thank calling you. this an episode number this week this was the president's uh, day special um we'll be back to a normal episode with our normal uh numbering scheme next week if you missed uh, any of our previous podcasts sportsothp.com has got the audio versions we're on all podcast platforms check out our facebook for all the late breaking news also uh, today's the last day that you can um you could really help us out. We did a post over the weekend, uh, nominate us for one of the best Redskins or Washington football team podcasts uh, in the area. They're doing this uh, uh, thing, the Washington football team is, uh, where they're trying to celebrate fan podcasts um, and you can nominate it. I would really love it if you could just take a couple of moments out of your day. Click on the link. I have it on our, again, facebook.com slash sports OTHP or search Sports on the Hill podcast, or we did it on our Twitter as well, and on our Instagram. There's a QR code. I made it easy to scan that or click on the link and just type in Sports on the Hill podcast as your favorite Washington football team podcast. Uh, and the host is uh, Carol Porter the third. see Carol Porter and then three eyes and Robbie Gross. And uh, that's me, obviously. And uh, uh, you can uh, vote for us. I really appreciate it. We're actually doing really well in the voting. So uh, your vote may push us over. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll announce uh, either final voting or um, the link to the results when that happens. Uh, so I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate Brian for jumping on and doing this during the day with me. Uh, and uh, check out his show as well. And I'm sure I'll have lots more shows, uh, maybe even another one on uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Friday this week. I'm not sure. I, if I believe I will be doing an episode on Friday. I haven't talked to the round table, uh, Tim, Mike, and Arun to see if they want to do one. But maybe the round table on Friday. Um, there will be an episode. I'll do a Friday episode. Right. So if, even if there's not, there'll I'm sure be a Monday one before our next show. Uh, so definitely yeah, yeah, check definitely. that out um on uh, the podcast partners button or search upon for the review so um anyway thank you again brian and uh i think that that is it any final thoughts before i let you go no no thank you for having me robbie i had a great time and uh, have a good night everybody sounds good all right thank you have a good one